Welcome back, everybody, to the Now Morning Show. And now up to our first interview. I am joined on set by Kelly McFarlane, who is a clinical psychologist as well as an organizational psychologist. And the topic we're speaking about today is World Health Day, which is today. And uh, we're going to be speaking about the linkage between mental health and physical health. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Sure. It's great to have you here. So the thing is, good health is not just feeling physically well, mm -hmm. but it also encapsulates uh, being mentally well also. Correct. Tell us about the importance of mental health when it comes to overall health. Okay, well, the thing about mental health is that when we're mentally healthy, we're motivated. Right. We are able to enjoy things that we usually enjoy. We make, great ch we make better choices. We get along better with people. And all of these things, even, even choices we make about our diet, all of right. these things impact our physical health, right? Um, let's say someone has a, 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 an NCD or an underlying condition, a, a, a physical condition, and we want to ensure that they are adhering to medical, you know, their medical needs. A lot of times, you know, if they are of optimal mental health, they're mm. more likely to adhere to the, the, their medical needs and take care of their body. One, uh, one of the, the elements of, let's say, moderate to severe mental illness is that lack of self-care. Right. Even as, as, as much as getting up, cleaning your surroundings, um, caring what you put into your body, caring to brush your teeth, take a shower, keep yourself clean right. and presented a certain way. All of these things that affect us socially as well um, contribute or impact on our physical health. I have a question, Kelly. Mm -hmm. How does one measure mental health? All right, measure is an interesting word. Well, I mean, you're saying, you know, keep it, keep it optimal, right? Yes. But how do we measure what is optimal? How do we know what is your optimal? Because I'm, I'm yeah. sure that my optimal will be different from yours, will be different from Carrie's. Okay, so, so then let me define a little bit then um, what it means to have mental health. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we may think, okay, if you're mentally healthy, you're happy all the time. Or you're, you're in a positive state of mind all the time. But part of mental health is also feeling negative emotions, but being able to regulate them. Um, you get a bad drive, you get a little angry. Anger is, is, <laughs> anger is normal. Say, say but it again, say it again. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little angry. <laughs> anger is normal. But does that anger carry on for 10, 15 minutes into the rest of the day and oh you're lashing out at everybody? So how do we regulate our emotions and our behaviors? Mm -hmm. um, so... When, when we look at somebody and we wonder, okay, or, or at ourselves first, and we wonder, okay, am I mentally healthy? Am I experiencing optimal mental health? Look at it, let's say, emotionally, first of all. As much as, it, as we do experience negative emotions, and by negative emotions, sadness, anger, those kinds of things, um, how often, how frequently? So yes, I can get irritable, mm -hmm. but am I irritable for most of the day? Or am I lashing out and snapping at people quite a lot? perhaps there's something else going on that I'm not checking into. Um, so how frequently we feel sad, how frequently we feel angry, and what we do, so emotions and behavior, how do we manage those emotions? Do we take it out on others? Do we have good sort of interpersonal interactions with other people? Um, you can, when, when, you're a, when you're a person who, or you know a person who, constantly falls out with everybody. They're always in something is, 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 is going on. They, they're always in, in the middle of some bacchanal, as right. you say. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's hard to keep friends. It's hard to keep up relationships. You know, that's another kind of key to check in with yourself. So it, it, it's really in a, in, in a context of how you're surviving in the world, right. Right. socially, internally am i happy with myself am i do i feel motivated am i um the, the things that i start to achieve can i concentrate can i focus uh, uh, uh do i feel like i'm fulfilling my potential you know so so all of these things um contribute to one feeling like ha huh, I, I feel like i'm mentally healthy and, and, and how do you know when you have done enough when, when you when you're at the point where you have done self-assessment and, and where do, how do you transition from that point to saying, okay, I think I need professional help and I need to see a healthcare professional uh, yeah. for my mental health? Um, so uh, what a lot of people do do is they might reach out to somebody that they know. Right. Um, or sometimes what al of also often happens is that 
people keep complaining, for lack of a better word. Right. You know, you, you have different people saying, you find me a little snappy, or how can they behave like that with me, et cetera. <laughs> and when you keep getting these messages, instead of denying or avoiding or being defensive, then it's time to say, well, OK, perhaps something is going on. The key to getting any kind of help is insight. So a person who doesn't think anything is wrong is not going to go anywhere for any kind right. of help. Right. So at least having that insight that, you know, you know, I, I know that I am affecting people in a particular way, even though I can't see that I am doing anything wrong because I'm affecting people in a particular way and I'm not sure what to do to change that. Right. Then I can enlist the help of someone, either someone in my social circle and, and, and when they can't help or if right. they can't help, then I go off to get some professional help elsewhere. But I feel like that's, that's plenty of introspection, right? And as you being from a mature place saying, all right, I'm realizing mm -hmm. that I'm affecting people negatively and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. There are people out here who, if we've been honest, they're just like, nah, 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 everybody just mad. Yeah, everybody like, else Everybody wrong. else is everybody the problem. Everybody else wrong. No? So, right. Yeah, so I am the one doing the right things and you wrong and you wrong and you wrong and no, they just don't understand what's going on here. How do we get to that person? Correct. Um, so, so that... That is a tricky one, and, and you know it, it kind of steps into the lane of personality disorder, mm. right? If we want to get real clinical, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it could be personality disorder, sometimes it could be defense, and this is where the role of stigma has a big role to play mm -hmm. because there are lots of people who know they need help, I mean, they struggle and they struggle. and they refuse to admit it to themselves because of that same word mad what go to a psychologist what um admit something is wrong get help that means i'm mad and everybody would would, would scorn me mm -hmm. and and say bad things about me i'll have no friends my right. job I, I will lose my job and 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 all of these things and i don't want to be associated and, and so a lot of people don't understand what mental health is and and, and that and I think when people say, okay, when they associate mental health with mad, they associate it with, um, let's say, psychotic symptoms. Mm -hmm. They know they think the, the unfortunate events that we see or incidents that we have seen um, play out in public. Um, but that is about 1% of the mental health, mental Ill, mentally ill population, mm -hmm. that schizophrenia, that psychotic yeah. you know, area. Um, one in four people experience a mental health challenge or mental illness in the, will, will experience in their life, will be affected by it in yeah. their life. That is a quarter of our population. That's what, 250, 300,000 people. I yeah, mean. Something like that. And Correct. people, so, so if we have a room full of 10 people, I mean. Chances are two of them. Correct. But least, we yeah. wear some really great masks. And the people can't tell that, you know, you, you, you come to work, you smile, you're happy with people, you give, give socially what is expected, what you think is expected, and you go off at home and you struggle alone. Mm -hmm. And then we wake up and we hear about suicides and we say, you know, I thought I saw something or I thought I heard something or there was no sign at all. Yeah. You know, and if only, if not for stigma, if, if, if only the the mindset and the you know the general thing um energy was of support to people right. we support other people when they are having a hard time managing their emotions or managing regulating and managing their behavior when they feel an extreme emotion um empathy you know can we teach empathy but well, that's the next thing i was getting to right because we have a whole generation now that dealing with everything in their phones like everything is happening in your phones and it Everybody's craving that attention. Everybody wants to get likes. Everybody wants to get followed. Everybody wants to get that level of attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems as though empathy is removed from the equation. It seems as though a lot of things are removed from the equation, like, you know, dealing with human interaction. Because mm -hmm. you're still talking to people. And the way we respond, like I, I saw people, the, the prime minister has contracted COVID-19, mm -hmm. and people saying things like, you know, he should die and, and, oh, and no. stupid things like that. And it's, and it's just yeah. because they can because they have access to a phone or they have access to whatever and they're seeing it and how do we how do we deal with that part of it because it's not only a particular generation of people who have the stigma mm -hmm. of that but there are people who are suffering from mental health and they don't even realize because yeah. they just keep craving attention more and more and more how do we hmm. how do we begin to address that part of it well you you touched on two different things you, <laughs> touched, on, you touched on the fact that we we do have people among us who are what you call trolls yes. and yeah. who just you know they do 
sort of spill a lot of negativity or purposely put negativity out there or or, or they're just you know unhappy and they kind of share Project, that whether yeah. inadvertently and they just they just sort of do it um and the other thing is um social media and the attention that social media brings can be very addictive mm -hmm. i mean literally the the the, the serotonin and and these feel-good um new neurotransmitters um hormones in, mm -hmm. our, in our brains when you post something and you get the likes and you get that attention um there's a biological a chemical reaction that really that yeah. correct that's yeah. the one that that makes us want to do that again mm. and, and to get that again you know that rush that anxiety so um you know for that reason it it, it's, it does spiral and spiral and i guess um well, with especially with the younger generation, this is this is their thing. This is, mm -hmm, I mean, right. they grow so, up with this. So what we're really seeing is uh, an outbreak of addiction. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> in a sense. Wow, that is so... <laughs> when you think about in it. In a sense, in a sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose that we're not, we, we're not classifying as addiction. Actually, no, I shouldn't say that. Um, that is a thing, I, you know, being addicted to social media and, and yeah. to the phone mm -hmm. and... Um, Try you know before you go to bed or, or until you, you absolutely can't take it anymore. You're on the phone first thing in the morning. You're back on the phone. Yeah, sometimes your phone falls on your face because you're in bed looking at <laughs> exactly. the phone down to the last <laughs> bit of energy you have to stay awake. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So so yes, you're right. That yeah. that 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 is a thing that um is emerging and and science is looking at. So um, maybe the maybe the the numbers have shifted when it comes to uh, the number of individuals with. A mental health issue because this mm. one is a little more insidious it's something that is a little more silent it may seem harmless yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah. it may seem harmless because you know this norm, right? yeah it's yeah. enormous yeah. everybody's on their phone everybody wants are posting these things mm -hmm. on social media mm -hmm. to get the likes to get that dopamine but release not just that is also yeah. it's also business for some people correct, correct. right yeah. because there are people yeah. who yeah we might laugh at, at influencers and say whatever but the reality of the situation is some of these people, that's how they make a living. Correct. Correct. And they have to stay on their phones to be able yes. to, to continue earning a living. But where, does, where do we draw that line? How do we even begin to address your mental health? And you're constantly having to post or, or having to try and get likes, follows, mm -hmm. you know. But you know something, I, I would admit and I would say that I find that the, 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 the teenagers and, and young adults now, that generation is very much in tune with mental health. I, I find that I see it there, I see it in that generation a lot more than in older generations. They are, they are a lot more open to, to mental health treatment, Agreed. to posting about mental health. And a lot of the, the, the celebrities in pop culture mm -hmm. do, do promote the importance of protecting mental health and, and, and eradicating stigma. So here's my challenge with that, right? Yes. Is that I agree with you. 100% I agree with you that the celebrities have been doing it, pop culture has been doing it, but I fear that it only affects the middle class and the upper class. And I still think that I, in my, my limited experiences on, on the ground, you still see young people who are not okay. They're not okay and they don't realize sure. that they're not okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like they're out here in these streets and they're doing what they yeah. have to do yeah. or they're not. Or sometimes they just disappear. And you oh, don't even yeah. see or hear from them again. And it's like, you know, how do we, how do we get those people? Because it's, it's still a stigma. Mm -hmm. It's still something that they wouldn't realize that they're dealing with. Yeah. How the, do we get... There is still a lot of work to be done. There is still a lot of, uh, again, oh, sensitization Correct. and, and um, you know, stigma eradication and so on. But I feel hopeful. I want to be hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> For our society, I mean, even in the media, look at how many programs we have now about mental health. Yeah. And, and I find that even since um, the unfortunate emergence of COVID-19, um, there has been more light placed on mental health. I mean, it's undeniable. Right. And at some point, just generally as a society, we will have to not um, sort of try to avoid or, 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 or be defensive about mental illness, but embrace it. That's right. And yeah. uh, as, as you said earlier, you know, th this, the younger generation, young adults, teenagers, they are more open to it and, and, and speaking about it, um, having it in the public space, mm -hmm. um, you know, as compared to the older generation who bottle everything up inside and, you know, it's like, you can't talk about that, you know, people think you're mad, or, and, and, and men especially. Mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to that, you know, many men in the, in the old mentality are trained 
um, you know, to be a man men don't cry. Weakness. Men don't hmm. cry. Men, men, um, what, what, what are you so sad for? You know, you're walking around looking sad, sad. Men don't do that, don't you know, know according you to the old mentality. Yeah. You know, uh, in, in this uh, macho kind of, uh, I'd say false masculinity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do... You know, there's so many questions to be answered I and, and, I know. and so I know. limited time. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, but before we go, though, um, what's the theme for World Health Day this this year? I think it's, it's, the, it's the, the, that emergence. There's no health without, no, without mental health. Right. And, and there really is no health without mental health. And, um, and, you know, it has come to the forefront so much more, especially in this pandemic, because everyone is locked away for the most part and uh, they're trapped with themselves. Yeah. And trap with their <laughs> demons, so to say. Yeah. You know, so um, what are some simple tips before we go um, that one can do to help better or cope. maintain mental health? So cope with, your, with yourself. Yeah. Well, as, you, as soon as you said um, locked away with themselves, it, it, it reminded me that, you know, with the, 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 the well not lockdown, but with the COVID measures, um, you know, a lot of people in our society would find the benefit of socializing, going to the bars, um, having dinner out with friends, and lime in a lot, partying, etc. Um, that's their usual coping to, to right. de-stress from the week, and, and we've lost that. And then when you ask a question, now that triggers me to say, don't create a bigger problem by drinking right. or, or, or overusing substances. Overusing. Yes. Uh, you say don't drink, oh, there, no, you yes. get a little no, worry. Correct, correct. Uh, no. I'm about to say, Sorry, yeah. yes, you can't drink. You can't Just mean. don't overdo. Right. Don't over, <laughs> overdo it, but, but by creating a, 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 a drinking problem. Um, but, uh, but other tips, you know, so sh even though we, we, we started saying okay, social distancing, but we physical distancing, not right. social. So right. do keep up um, your, your social contacts. Research does show that one of the, the key ways to, to heal from any mental problem or even, or even physical health problem is to have a good social support network. So mm -hmm. keep that. Make sure you get some fitness and some, some exercise in your day to make your body feel good and your nutrition. The three main things, eat, sleep, exercise. Right. Those three lifestyle um, uh, elements, make sure you're, 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 take, you're taking Paying attention to that, it sets you up to be able to handle whatever the day brings. Well, need just sleep and exercise. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. Then. Well, that's the new watchwords. Kelly McFarlane, I want to thank you so much for joining us You're this morning. Welcome. And it was such a wonderful conversation. I wish we had more time, to yes. be honest. Well, <laughs> but thank yeah, you so yeah. much. As we get information there, uh, there's no health without mental health. And I was chatting with clinical psychologists as well as organizational psychologist Kelly McFarlane about World Health Day. We're going to take a short break and come back with much more right here on the Norm Morning Show. Stay with us. Time keeps passing by, oh it's tempting me to try, it's been so hard.